So when airbrushing, white can be one of the most difficult colors to use. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you some of my tips to make that whole process a whole lot easier. Now the paint you use when airbrushing is definitely a personal preference, and I use lots of different brands of paint. However, the one that I like using the best, and especially when it comes to white, is the Trident airbrush colors. The reason for this is that I feel that these particular paints, which are made with an automotive grade pigment, run almost as smoothly as urethane based paints. And for this demonstration, because I am going to use white, I'm using a sheet of black paper. It's a bit of a thicker stock, as well as my HPCS Iwata Eclipse. Now this runs a 0.35 needle nozzle setup, and I've also got the Sparmax moisture filter hooked up underneath, and this does have a Mac valve on it. If you want to learn more about this Sparmax filter, I'll link up to a video in the description below. A couple of things I like to do is I like to remove the air cap. It just allows for easier access to that needle for picking off tip drying. Plus you can also see exactly where the paint's going to hit. This is really handy if you are going to do fine detail. And the other thing is I've got the compressor set to about 30 psi with the Mac valve entirely wound out. So you can hear if I wind it in, it'll drop that psi right down. So I'll just keep it open so that if you aren't running with a Mac valve, then the Eclipse will run very similar to this demo. Okay, so the Trident paint, you can run it straight out of the bottle. However, it is gonna be very thick, and I think this will be pretty common across the board with all different brands. But let's start with that. Straight out of the bottle, 30 PSI. And to start with, I'm just gonna spray from a distance. And then you can see, if I go up close, I'm able to get fine detail but tip drying hasn't really started yet. It will do once I paint for a bit longer and you can see now I'm starting to get a bit more intermittent spray. You may or may not be able to see, but there is some white buildup on the end of that needle. But if I start spraying, you can see there's a little bit of crackliness around the stroke. And now I'm starting to get almost a shadow line underneath, a dual line. So it is starting to tip dry. You can see it's it's got little gaps in it now. And I'm not able to go as fine. Remember, this is just straight out of the bottle, so no reducer at all. And you can see there's definitely more buildup on that needle. So what happens and how tip drying is created is that air and paint are passing through the little fluid nozzle. So every time you're painting, that air is drying some of the paint on the end of the needle. And if you're not doing double action correctly, and say you let go and paint and let go, you're gonna build it up a lot quicker than if you pull back for paint and then shut it off. So you wanna keep that air press down at all times and just pull back for paint. The other thing that works really well is the Iwata washing brush. I've got a video on that as well, but you can just use that to clean off your tip drying with ease. And why would you want to run your paint straight out of the bottle? Well, if you're doing, say, a wall mural where it's a bit bigger and you want to get instant bright white highlights, then you may choose not to thin your paint down. And same if you're working, say, on a black t-shirt and you want to get quick coverage, then I also wouldn't be thinning out my paint, it's just gonna take longer to cover. Just remember that that means that you will have more tip drying issues and it may be harder to get fine detail. But for quick coverage, straight out of the bottle with the Trident paint isn't a bad idea at all. Okay, let's say you want to thin out your paint, then with the Trident, you use a reducer and you can put that straight into your paint to thin it down. They also have a reducer concentrate, which you need to mix at nine parts bottled water to one part concentrate to make up your mix. Different brands will have different products which you can use to thin out your paint, whether they call it a reducer or a thinner. Whatever the brand recommends, use that to thin out your paint. So now let's say that we want to run with that 30 PSI. You still want to get decent coverage, but you want to have less tip drying. Then I would mix up your paint at a one to one ratio. So equal parts. I'm just doing this by eye. I've put the reducer in first and then put the paint in. This is just mixing it in the cup. You don't have to do this. You can just pop the lid on, give it a good shake, and that'll mix up your paint for you. So now what you're gonna find is that it's gonna run smoother. You're gonna be able to get that finer detail. However, 
when you're up close, and this is what a lot of beginners will struggle with, it's going to want to spider out on you. And I pull back, you can see I can get nice fine dots, there's no crackling around those dots. However, if I go too heavy, it's going to spider out, okay? There is still more tip drying, but a lot less than using it straight out of the bottle. And you can see I've got no issue getting fine detail. Now don't get disheartened if you've just started airbrushing and you're watching this video and you can't achieve these sort of lines at this mixing ratio with your paint, especially with your white. I've been doing this for quite some time and it really just takes practice. The other thing that you'll find is that in order to get the white extremely bright, you'll need to cover over it numerous times. So you just keep coating it, covering it very, very slowly with that white paint. And you can see it's getting nice and bright. What I also like to do is leave the air on, don't pull back for paint, and that way it's going to dry the surface, the paint will cross-link, and then you'll be able to build up the paint nice and brightly without the risk of it spidering out and pushing out the centre of the paint. Let me show you what that looks like. So if I try and do it too heavy, too quick, you're going to get this sort of an effect. So if you're going for that look and you want to get those real defined edges, then by all means you can use that to your advantage. However, if you want a nice gradual build up, then you just need to keep coating that white, keep doing layer by layer and very, very slowly, and that will get it nice and bright. And you can see how bright that is compared to the previous. So again, if I want to get these brighter, even with the dots, work back over them a couple of times. And I think this is where a lot of beginners struggle is they don't have the control to work back over the top of it. And sometimes you need to do three or four passes to get it nice and bright, especially if you're working on a black surface, a black t-shirt, for example, then it's gonna take longer to build. So just be patient with your white. You can see how much brighter those dots are now. So working back over them will continue to brighten them, but just have some patience, take your time, and then that way you will get a nice bright white highlight. Okay, so now if you wanna do really fine detail using white, then my mix that I like using is 30% paint, 70% reducer. And this is at about 20 PSI. So I've dropped the pressure on my compressor and now I'm at that mixing ratio. I've already got some that is pre-mixed that I use regularly. Now this will allow even this Eclipse to go super fine. However, it is going to be even more difficult to use. So again, if you're just starting out, you can give this a go. If you're mixing up say 100 mil, you would do 30 mil of paint 70 mil of reducer. You can see how nicely that flows. However, if I'm up nice and close trying to do those fine details, I have to be extremely careful not to pull back too far. If I do, it's gonna spider out very, very easily. So you can see even pulling back a little bit further I'm gonna get a much wetter line. So you wanna really control it. And because it's even thinner, you're gonna to need to do more coats to get it bright. However, running at this mix, you're gonna get little to no tip drying and you can go really, really fine. You can see how easily that's spidering out. But if I control it, I can get some really nice fine dots so when you are attempting to do that really fine detail and you want to make sure that your paint is super smooth and there's no issues, then I also like using these paper cone strainers. This is a 190 micron, a mini version. So same as what spray painters use, but a lot smaller. All I do is I'll hold that over the top of the cup and then strain my paint straight into it. And this just means that with any of that old paint where you get dried up paint around the edge of the bottle, well, that can fall into your paint and then contaminate it and any of those 
those little dried bits of paint will block up the nozzle and then you're gonna have more issues with tip drying. So straining your paint, especially if you're using older paint, is definitely a good idea. So to fast track your learning, you can definitely check out our online airbrushing course at airbrushasylum.thinkific.com or you can continue to watch some of the other videos that I've got listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.